Hey, John. Uh, welcome to the uh, first ever NIU Outreach blog, or vlog, I should say. Um, thanks for joining me. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, Stephanie. It is so exciting to be like the pioneers, you and I, right? So very, <laughs> very fun. Um, I'm John Newton. I'm an instructor with Northern Illinois University. I've been working with them for probably about 15 years or so now, teaching in their continuing education programs, mostly in the prep courses for HR certification, but I also do some other one or two day courses on essentials of human resources, uh, strategies for running a business, things like that. In addition to that, which may be relevant to today's conversation, I own a human resources and learning development consulting business called John Newton and Associates. You can guess where I got the name. It took me a lot of research, but I, I landed on that. And um, what we do is we go into businesses uh, around the country that some have uh, international presence and help them with everything from running or managing their HR departments to a lot of training, crisis management, which is some of the things we'll talk about today, I'm sure, and coaching and development. So a little bit of all over generalist type work and I am passionate about human resources. Awesome. So we talked, we've been talking a lot, you know, just in our one-on-one -on -one conversations about COVID and what we're seeing with COVID and some of the trends. I know we've had a couple of blogs around kind of benefit trends in COVID. So I know that we've experienced kind of this whole return to work and what that's looking like for companies. Um, now that we're opening up and things are being a little bit more relaxed, what are you hearing from your clients in terms of, you know, what are their questions that they're coming to you with? You know, that's a great question in itself, Stephanie, right? I think there's a difference between what I'm hearing and what I'm feeling from my clients. So I want to jump to the feeling first, because okay. quite honestly, what I'm feeling from my clients um, in general, right, is this sense of panic. What do we do and how do we do it right, right? The, the actual questions that um, are being asked are, um, when is the right time to bring our people back? Uh, those that we have allowed to work uh, virtually or remotely. Do we bring our people back? Um, how do we keep them safe when we, when we bring them back? What about those employees that might not want to come back? Um, uh, vaccination, right? You can go down the whole path of in the last couple of months, we've been blessed in the country and the world to have vaccination. Do we require vaccinations? Can we require? So there's a, the, the underlying theme is most of my clients and, you know, my clients are around the country and pretty diverse in industry and for-profit, non-profit, but the thematically it's, we want to bring people back. What does that look like? And how do we make sure it's safe? Sure. So what are some of the trends and what are you recommending in terms of, you know, uh, having people back in terms of, especially because it really could impact the bottom line, right? There are some companies that are now finding that they're, they can successfully run their business virtually, but they've traditionally had an in-person kind of, um, you know, environment. So how do you bridge that? What are you, what are you recommending to them? I'm trying to help them think thematically with a high level about risk and you and I who both teach HR certification prep, we talk about risk in our, in our courses, which there's upswing and downswing risk, like all risk isn't bad. Yep. Um, but the, generally speaking, what, what I'm having them think about is the business, the employees, the customer slash clientele, and then risk for all three of those. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think you asked, what am I recommending? It's almost like we're jumping to the end, but it's a great question, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I never tell them what to do other than make sure you talk to your legal team if you have one, right? So, you, so right. we're not violating laws or anything. But I think, first of all, I think you nailed it from a business standpoint. We need to look at the bottom line, right? Whether we're a for-profit or not-profit, are we able to sustain, you know, bringing people back or not bringing people back and what does that look like and so a lot of these companies have had great success having people work virtually but there's also been some bumps along the mm -hmm. way so I often have them think about ask themselves why are you trying to bring them back what are you trying to accomplish now right mm -hmm. um, from a people standpoint I like them to think about well what do your people want and so I've helped a lot of my clients, we've surveyed our people and just asked them. I said, don't assume everybody wants to stay working from home. I think that's an assumption that's erroneous. Yeah. And I can think of one of the surveys I did where probably over 30% of the people, 100% wanted to be back, right? Back into the office. 
Um, so one of the survey questions we're asking, if we returned you, do you want as needed, one day, two day, three day? day, four day, or five day to figure out what are the employees thinking about? Do I want to come back? And how much would that look like, right? And then customers, customer service has, have we heard from customers? Has it impacted them in a way that the, the only way to really achieve in, you know, continuous improvement in customer service numbers is by having them back. And so the trends are looking at those three things from my clients. And, um, you know, my recommendation right now would be obviously do what's best for the business, but really consider the employees and the customers. Short answer to all of that, Stephanie, um, would be a hybrid approach. I'm really yes. recommending a hybrid approach, a different view pre-pandemic hybrid, a little bit of both. Good, good. Yeah, I think that's what we're seeing. I see, I see a lot of companies that are inviting individuals back um, kind of at a scheduled approach. Um, and then as they're coming back, you know, it's not a traditional five day work week, right? They're kind of adding a little bit more flexibility in terms of, you know, maybe two days from home, three days in the office or one day from home. So I, I am seeing, and I agree with you, I think the approach um, that's going to help at least from a transition standpoint is gonna be this hybrid approach. Definitely. Yeah, and I think when you talk about that, one of the underlying recommendations I have is don't commit to anything permanently as an employer. Yeah. So be very cautious about saying, this is what we're willing to try. And so I encourage employers start with less versus more. So in other words, if you really think three days a week home office could be our long-term goal, I might say let's start with two because it's easier to add than take away. And I know mm -hmm. in a way we're taking away because people are used to one thing now, but if you roll out this amazing policy of, oh, you can work four days a week home and then we find it's just madness, it's right. much more painful than saying, we're gonna try it this way. If the employees and the customer, the employees demonstrate they can make it work and the customers embrace this approach, maybe we'll expand it again. Right. Now we're seeing um, some universities saying, hey, you need to be fully vaccinated in order to come back to school. Um, are we seeing any trends like that in terms of uh, employers uh, requiring vaccinations to be in the office or anything like that? Absolutely. It's such a good question, Stephanie. And this is why I say, you know, there's no law yet. Right. Driving vaccinations, but there's certainly, we're ending up in the courts. And just recently, within the last day or two of this recording, uh, one of the federal courts came out and supported a hospital system mandating vaccinations, right? Um, what I think ultimately we're gonna see is we're gonna see years of claims for and against this process. Mm -hmm. What is recommended, at least where I'm trying to drive uh, my clients and they seem to be you know, receiving it well as, let's first do the path of encouragement to get the vaccination, right? Mm -hmm. And then figure out where's the gap. So I'll use a client to have as an example, not by name of course, but they're a small company, a little, let's just say 100 employees, give or take. And they're at right now about a 93% vaccination rate by simply encouraging and announcing. And so they've been having competitions, our, our local office, our remote staff. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait a few more weeks and then we're going to likely have me reach out to those individuals who haven't and figure it out what's the story? Is there something around the story? Before we decide, do we want to consider forced vaccination? Maybe the, the seven or eight who choose not to do it, or maybe by that time four, are people with medical reasons, right. you know, pregnancy concerns, things like mm -hmm. that. So I think prior to mandate force, wouldn't it be nice if we saw where we're at by people who chose to do it first? Sure. Yeah, yeah. And now the ones that, I mean, even outside of vaccination, how are we, or what are you seeing from your clients? How are they ensuring that the associates feel safe coming back to work? Yeah, well, it's, it's using a bridge of vaccination. One of the messages is the more we're vaccinated, the less, the, according to what the latest medical research is out, you know, the less likely we'll be transferring it to each other, right? So I think that is one part of the puzzle. But the other is looking at workspace issues, right? Mm -hmm. um, do, you know, do we need to, 
have um, wider stance between cubicles. Um, and again, some of that will depend on vaccination. Um, I think for sort of that visual, a lot of clients are still gonna, you know, have the hand sanitizer everywhere now. You know, I, I remember yeah. years ago working for a president, we were going to, um, uh, this is a total off ramp, but we went to a funeral of an employee's um, father who ended up being the Maytag repairman. Oh like the guy God. in the commercial <laughs> and from WKRP. Oh Two stories. I was just going to support the employee and I sit down and I get this. But anyhow, we stopped for gas on the way, a total off ramp, but we're in HR people, you get it. Yeah. And um, and I, I had a sanitizer and I remember the president saying, oh, don't sanitize. You will then just, you, you'll be at risk of getting all diseases, right? And now it's kind of come full because yeah. So, you know, I won't be able to fight off anything. And now it's come off the, the other way, which sanitize. So I think we'll have sanitizers. I think um, uh, a welcoming of mask wearers, particularly for people who have colds or flus is saying, we don't want you to come in if you are, but if you have anything, wear a mask and you won't be frowned at or look like a weirdo or something. You know, all these sure, words yeah. that mean, at least I thought of. I think some of those, and then, really tracking what the CDC, what the public health departments continue to say about this virus and others. I think we need to be better at communicating with our employees on our websites, intranets, um, company meetings on, hey, here's the latest and greatest, and we will continue to do everything we can to keep you safe, just as we did from getting, you know, falling in the workplace or being shot in the workplace. Yeah, yeah I think that's, I, I think that approach is going to work well. Um, I know that some of the companies that I've, I've worked with, their, their CEOs and their leaders have been very forthright about communicating kind of the status and where we're at, um, even so much as to say, hey, if you are working from home, we get it, the dog barks, right? We get it. We, we understand we're fully supportive of kind of this new hybrid approach of work you know, no stress, no pressure, just get, you know, focus on the work. And, and I think that message, especially from a leadership standpoint, right, really works well. Stephanie, I love to hear you say that. And I 100% agree. You know, you and I have been on a million Zoom calls in the last year and a half together even. Yeah. And, you know, my line is, unless we see someone walk through a spouse or a child, or unless a dog jumps in your lap, is it really a Zoom meeting, yeah. right? <laughs> right? So that's what yeah. I, I think. And I think that what we have to do from an HR standpoint is we have to encourage and help leadership to do that. But we also help to help management measure employee success differently, right? Yeah because it used to be you're here from eight to four, you did your job. Well, now if people are working from home, I don't care if you step away to throw in a load of laundry because here's the things I need to see being completed, right? And so it's going to drive measuring performance, I believe differently, but I think that's, a, that's an improvement personally, I think. Yes, 100%, yeah, I agree. So overall, um, what's kind of your global recommendation, the global kind of stance on where we fall? Yeah, you know, if I ran the world, which I keep waiting, Stephanie, for you to let me know when I do. I mean, I wake up every morning and know she hasn't texted no, me yet. No, no but text has come yet. What, what I do, yeah, I, I think a nice hybrid approach for all of us, right? I think, yes, there are some industries where people, ha I mean, you, you have to be there, but that didn't really change during the pandemic. But for those that have this ability, I think it's, let's look at the hybrid approach. Let's, you know, if we can get the work done, and we can still have an engaged workforce because I don't want those measurements to go down either. And engaged means do people love and feel attached to their job, right? That's our job to help them feel that way. Um, I think that, that ultimately will be the long-term new worldview, if you will, something we can all celebrate. Um, what, I will, what I don't want to see, again, when I run the world, is us using return to office as punishment. Yeah. So you're an employee of company ABC, here's your job. If we're allowing you to be virtual, be successful virtually, or you don't work with us. You see what right. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, again, it gets back to how we measure performance. But I think ultimately we've learned in a year and a half that we can run business in a completely different way. Um, I have two companies right now that are saving over a million dollars by the space they're eliminating because they're gonna allow more people to work virtually and things like that. So I see this virtual works, virtual work, but I also see a more hoteling in the workspace. You and I don't all have our own offices and cubicles, but we'll have well cleaned, 
rotatable workspaces for when you do come into the office. That's my hunch, that's my gut, and I think we can pacify the employer, the employee, and the customer that way. Yep, yeah, I agree. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time and expertise. You are an expert, uh, just, oh, so you, just so you know that. Um, you are an expert in our world. So um, thank you. This information is great. I think it's going to be very helpful for associates and for, for employers. And, uh, and thank you. Thanks for your time. Awesome. Thanks, Stephanie. I appreciate it. Good luck to everybody. Thank you.